Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at some ways of using half tones in Adobe Illustrator to fill shapes. We're going to do this with a range of different tools. And we're going to start with a tool or pattern that's actually built into Illustrator. So I'm going to the ellipse tool here. I'm going to make sure that I have a solid fill and no stroke at all. And I'm going to drag out four circles of decreasing size. And I'm just going to move them into position. So I'm going to use the second largest circle here, the third largest circle over here, and the smallest one just in here. And that gives me a relatively nice little cloud shape. I'm going to select over all of these shapes and I'm going to join them together from the Pathfinder panel. You can get to it by choosing Window and then Pathfinder and just click here on Unite. We're going to keep the Layers palette visible here because a lot of the action is going to take place in the Layers panel and it's important that you concentrate on what's happening there because that's going to tell you ahead of time if disaster is about to strike. So with our path selected here we're going to the swatches panel and I'm going to click here on the swatch libraries menu and go down to patterns and then basic graphics and then come across here to basic graphic dots. Now these are dot patterns that are shipped with Adobe Illustrator and you can choose one of those to use. I'm going to select this one which was the 10 dpi 50% but choose whatever dot pattern you like. I think that my dots are a bit small so I'm going to select over my shape, go to object transform and scale and I'm going to increase the dot size to 200% but I don't want my shape to increase and right now it is increased so I'm going to come down here and disable transform objects. So now I have my shape the same size as it was but the dots are just bigger. I'll click OK. Now one of the things that's nice to do with shapes like this is to even out these dots around the edge. You can see that some of these dots aren't complete dots. So let's just take a copy of this shape. Just going to alt drag a duplicate away and let's have a look and see if we can improve on the look of this shape. So I'm just going to turn that one off and lock it down. Let's put the one that we're working on on the top so that we can see it a bit more easily here in the layers panel. Now what I want to do to be able to make these little bits around the edge full circles is I have to extract these shapes from where they are. So we're going to select on the shape, we have it selected here, I'm going to choose object and then expand and click OK. And let's have a look in the layers panel what we've got. Well we've got a clipping group with a clipping path and these are pieces of the pattern. So basically we've got a whole lot of stuff happening here and none of it is particularly useful. So with our group selected here, what we're going to do is go to the Pathfinder panel, again Window and then Pathfinder and we're going to click here on Divide. And divide is going to give us what we want. You can see now in the group we've got little pieces. So we've got quarters of circles, full circles, half circles, all sorts of things going on here. But down the bottom is going to be something we don't want. And a little bit further down here, what we've got here is a series of shapes that when I click on one of them you'll see it's no fill and no stroke. We don't want these. It's really, really important that we get rid of them. So we're going to select one of them. Doesn't matter which one you select. We're going to choose Select and then Same and Fill and Stroke. And that's going to select every single shape in this document that has no fill and no stroke. And we're just going to press the Delete key and that's going to get rid of all of them. So the only thing that's left in this group is going to be bits and pieces of circles. Some of them are full circles, most of them are just bits and pieces. So we're going to select back over this group and we're going back to the Pathfinder panel, which is being our friend today. And we're just going to click on Unite. And what that's going to do is it's going to stick together every single full circle that's there. So if it's possible to have a full circle, it's going to be stuck together. So you can see that we've cleaned this up quite a bit. But what I want to do now that I've got these out of the shape is I want to replace these with actual circles. And for this, we're going to need a script. 
Now before we continue with our script, if you enjoy the creative projects that I share here on my channel, then I'd love to invite you to learn with me over on Skillshare. I'm a Skillshare top teacher and I've created hundreds of classes designed specifically to help beginners and curious creatives build skills with confidence. I specialize in helping you to surprise yourself with what you can do. Whether you're just getting started or you're working on brushing up your skills, every class is step by step and easy to follow, so you'll never be left guessing what to do next. And while I've built each class around a clear topic, I go deeper than showing you just what buttons to click. Instead, I pack in loads of extra tips, creative techniques and smart workflows that'll help you build a strong foundation and make great looking projects right from the start. So whether you're learning how to make repeat patterns, build digital illustrations or develop the design know-how to bring your ideas to life, there's always something practical and inspirational to take away. But Skillshare isn't just about my classes. There are hundreds of talented teachers there sharing their expertise too. With thousands of classes in everything from digital illustration and surface design to animation, typography and color theory, there's always something new to explore no matter where you are on your creative journey. Skillshare is a great platform for creative learning because it's completely project based. You don't just watch, you make. And believe me, that's the best way to learn. You can go at your own pace, revisit classes at any time, submit a project for critique and connect with other creatives along the way. So if you've been thinking about diving deeper into your creative side or finally learning how to use the tools you've always wanted to explore, then Skillshare is a great place to start and I'd love to be part of that journey with you. The best part, my personal invitation link in the description below will give you a currently 30 day trial so that you can try out my classes and everything else that Skillshare has to offer completely free for a whole month. If you're ready to learn, create and surprise yourself with just what you can do, come and join me on Skillshare. I can't wait to see you there. For us to turn these fractional shapes into actual circles, we're going to use the script and we're going to download it from here. This is a GitHub location. I'll give you a link in the description below. When you come to this page, you're just going to click here on download raw file and you can download it to your downloads folder. So I've just done that now and we're ready to go. So before we run the script, we need two things. Firstly, we need all of these shapes out of the group or else it's going to fail spectacularly. So let's go to object and ungroup so that all of these shapes are not in groups. And then we're going to create the shape that we want to replace these little bits with. So I'm going to create a circle, just a small circle, doesn't actually matter how big it is, but I'm going to make this one blue so that you can see the impact it's going to have on the overall design. Now this shape, this blue shape that we're going to use to replace these pieces with needs to be at the top of everything. And as I said, everything needs to be out of the group. So let's select over absolutely everything, our blue circle and the things we want to replace. And we're going to choose file and then scripts, other script. I'm going to navigate to my downloads folder. So I'm going to use as my name and then just downloads. This is the script that we're using, replace items JSX. So I'm going to click on it and click open. And when I do that, a dialogue is going to open up. So what to replace is we're going to choose here top object and we're going to click over here to fit to element size. That's going to make sure that this object scales down to the size of the elements it needs to replace and we'll just click OK. And what we have now is we've got all of these little fractional pieces around the edge of our shape. Instead of them being fractional circles, they're now full circles. They're just smaller than they were. So you can see the difference in the look of these two designs is quite significant. And I like this one a lot. We're going to finish off by selecting that object that we used and just deleting it. Now it's also possible at the same time to recolor these objects using again a script. I'm going to give you a link to the script we're going to use in the description below. So let's just go there. The script is called Randomize Color. Now on this page, you're just going to scroll down here to see what the script does and you're going to click here on Download. 
and it's going to be downloaded and a dialog will open up. You'll see that it's a zip file here. So let me just increase the size of my dialog because I need to extract this. So here is my script here in my downloads folder in a subfolder. I'm just going to grab it and copy it and paste it actually into my downloads folder so it'll be a little bit easier for me to find in a minute. So let's just close that down. The link to that's in the description below for you. Now for our swatches we need some colors to use. Now one of the places where you can find a nice range of blue colors to use is again in the swatches panel. You're going to click on the swatch library here and we're going down here to nature and we're going to select beach because there's lots of blue colors here in the beach collection. So I'm just going to select this one here. I'm just going to click on it and you'll see that it's automatically added to the swatches palette. So I can just close this dialog. Now using this particular script as well, it's important that all of our shapes are not in a group. So I'm just going to select over the shapes here. So I've got them selected and I'm going to click on my color swatch. So I've got shapes and color swatch selected. Now we'll go to file and then scripts and we're going back to our downloads folder. And the script I'm going to use is called random swatch fill color. So I'm just going to click on it and click open. And it will be run automatically on our shape. And when I click away, you'll see that this time we've got different color dots. So that script has taken the dots that we had and just recolored them using the swatch that we used. So there's a half tone effect created in Illustrator from a built in pattern. And we've actually been able to work at the edge elements and the colors to create something a little bit different. So now we've got a couple of handy scripts for working with designs like this. Let's take it one step further. Right now we're using a pattern fill of dots that was shipped with Illustrator, but it's possible to create our own half tone pattern and to have dots of different sizes. So let's go across here. I've already made a cloud design. Now I'm going to duplicate it before I start. I'm going to show you at the end why that was really important to do. So I'm just going to the last panel here. I'm going to lock down and hide this duplicate one so that I'm working on this one here. Now we're going to create our own half tone dots here. So to do that, we need to fill this shape here. So I'm going to target the fill. We need to fill it with a gradient. So I'm choosing this black to white gradient. I'm going to click on the radial gradient and I'm going to flip it so that the black is in the middle and the white is on the edges. Now I'm going to get into trouble in a minute if I use black because that would mean that the dots in the center of this shape would be all joined together. I prefer them not to be joined together. So I'm going to turn this black into a gray. So I'm going to double click on the gradient slider. I'm going up here and choosing gray scale as my slider because that just makes life a bit easier for picking a dark gray that is not fully black. So that's good for our gradient except that I'm saying that there's some white edges here. So I'm going to the gradient annotator now and I'm just going to stretch it because I want my gradient to cover my shape just a little bit better. So I'm pretty happy with this right now. So we're going to apply our half tone effect by going to effect and then pixelate and color half tone. Now the maximum radius is going to define the largest size of the circles that are where the darkest pixels are. So this is going to be in the middle here. The maximum radius of those is going to be 20. That's a pretty good size. And to get all black dots, you need to set all of your channels to the exact same value, but they can be any value. I just like 45 because it gives me a diagonal design rather than a strictly grid like one. So 45 is a really good value to choose. Make all of your channels the exact same amount. Click OK. You can see here we've got black dots in the middle and smaller dots around the outside. Now if that's not going to work for you, if you don't think it's right, open up the appearance panel which you can get to by choosing window appearance and click on this color half tone. I think I might reduce my size a little bit so I'm just going to make a maximum radius of 16. Click OK again and you can see that my half tone has been updated. 
Now, exactly the same situation as we had previously. We've got some cutoff dots around the edge here, but we have a different solution here because this is a bitmap effect applied to a vector drawing, and for us to be able to get the dots out, we're going to have to trace it. And to trace it, we have to make it into an image. So we're going to choose Object and then Rasterize. Set your resolution to high and just click OK. So now we have effectively a picture here. This is just a picture of dots. And now that we've got a picture of dots, we can trace it. So we're going to image trace. Just click OK. It's a really small image. Illustrator thinks it's huge. It's not. So I'm just going to open up the dialog here. I'm going to click here on ignore color. So there's an advanced set of options here. If you don't see them, just open that up. I'm going to ignore color and the color I want to ignore is this white here. Everything else looks just fine. So I'll go ahead and click expand. Can close this dialog now. And what I've got is something similar to what we had previously in the other examples is we've got little bits around the edge and then we've got dots in the middle. So we can go ahead now and use our script to clean things up. So I'm just going to make a circle here. I'm going to make it a blue color for now. So before I run the script, I'm going to check two things in the layers panel. One of them is that these objects are not in a group and mine are in a group, so I need to solve that. But also to make sure that there are no unfilled shapes in the bottom, none of those no fill, no stroke shapes. So you want to make sure if there were any that you've got rid of them. I also need to break these out of the group. So I'm going to select the group and choose object ungroup. Now, if you don't ungroup, then what's going to happen is you're just going to end up with one single round circle. So you'll know that you've made a mistake, just undo it and start over again. So we're right here now. So I'm going to select my ellipse and all of my dots and run my script. Now here I can just go up and find my downloads folder. And here is the replace item script. I'll just click open and then bring my dialog back onto this screen. The settings are what they were previously, so I'll just click OK. And now we've got this nicer shaped object with our halftone dots, bigger in the middle, lighter around the outside, and everything is a circle. So let's just get rid of that circle that we don't need. Now, if we want to create some colors, we can do so. Let's go to the swatches panel. I'm just going to go back and get my nature colors because they were kind of nice. I've got all my circle selected, my swatch selected, and I'm going back to run that script for changing the color. It's random swatch fill color and I'll just click it and click open and it's run on my dots and now we've got all different colored dots. Now before we started, remember I saved up a copy of the shape. Here it is there. So before I do anything with it, I'm just going to select over all of these dots and put them in a group because I don't want them to start wandering away on their own. I'm going to make this one visible and unlock it. And I'm just going to align these. Because my dots are in a group, I can just align them over the top of my base shape. Now I'd like my path to be just a little bit bigger, so I'm going to select on it and just hold the shift key and make it a little bit bigger and just line it up over my dots. So I want all of the dots within this shape and I'm going to use it to create an edge to this shape. So I'm going to flip the stroke and fill so it doesn't have any fill at all, but it does have a stroke. I'm going to select over the stroke itself and let's make it one of these lighter colors. And we could also increase the stroke weight and so now we have this half tone dot cloud with different size dots, different colors if you like, and also obviously round edges. Every dot is a circle. And if you want an outside edge, a sort of path around things, then that's a way of achieving that result. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time, then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.